Thank you for joining in. Uh, my name is Josefa Kutianawala. I'm joining in from Henkel, Germany, from the Henkel Adhesives Technology business. And I would like to give you a quick overview and maybe share a few use cases that you might find very interesting in your industry with our printed electronics division. So let's explore the world of printed electronics and how this technology is being used to transform a simple surface into a smarter surface or a more active and um, sensory surface. Yeah. So the first question, with a quick show of hands, if I could read the room, how many of you have heard of printed electronics or predictor electronics? One, two. Oh, that's nice. OK, almost half the room. Great. OK, I think I'll wrap up then. Yeah, no, sorry. So uh, to give you a quick overview of how we envision our printed electronics technology to enable the next generation of IoT sensors, we would like to drive um, this technology overview, showcasing how sensors form the basic hardware or the foundation uh, to connect the surfaces from where we would have the processes to read out data, use those analytics, and then connect those data points with the end user, that is people such as us, right? So if we talk about sensors, we've, we, we have sensors such as touch sensors, capacitive sensors, resistors, we have uh, health wearables, we also have heating capabilities now, which I would like to show to you in the next few slides, yeah? So why is sensor technology such an important part for our printed electronics business and in general for the industry? Various metrics and various trends point only upward. Uh, by 2050, or even we propose 2030, the industry is doubling and tripling at a very high rate. We call it the internet of everything, right? Where we see connection points and data points between various different interconnections, whether it's a, it's, it's a charging surface, whether it's a, basically a smart glass in an automobile, or whether it's even a smart dashboard, yeah? Uh, we also see the pull coming mainly from the B2B environment. As you know, our adhesives business is a mostly a B2B business with a lot of industrial customers. And what we see is a lot of them want to explore how they could transition from traditional electronics to printed electronics. And why it's so important and why it fits this uh, uh, requirement that pr is because printed electronics allows a lot of flexibility in design, right? You can miniaturize your prints, you can make it flexible. Uh, it helps to easily integrate within an existing ecosystem of electronics and provides multiple functions and is easily scalable. If you have ever seen how a newspaper is printed, it's roll to roll. If you have ever gotten a t-shirt printed for any of your friends or family, it's screen printing. These are some of the very simple methodologies also being followed in the world of printed electronics, right? It's basically the same concept when we print on a PET foil. So where does Henkel come into play, right? Henkel has a, a legacy business with a Loctite brand where we have a lot of these functional inks and coatings. What you see, the silver jar is actually silver ink with around 60 to 70% being silver filler. So it's highly conductive uh, material. Uh, the image in the middle is basically a printing apparatus for screen printing. And on the right is an example of a, of a foil with uh, conductive traces, yeah? So this is the entire, basically, value chain where we have a lot of expertise, where we start off as a material provider, but now we are leveraging our position in the industry to be an ecosystem provider. We can help you connect with software and hardware providers to come up with an end-to-end -end sensor solution. And why is it advantageous? As we know, traditional electronics has some level of high fabrication costs. There's not easily um, a lot of scalability. We are still talking about rigid PCBs. Uh, we talk about uh, complex fabrication with pick and place. Whereas with printed electronics, uh, as I was explaining, is as simple as maybe screen printing or roll-to-roll -roll printing on a PET foil or PE, any plastic substrate. We also see with a medical environment or with the medical customers, it's also possible to do on certain substrates like TPU, which are stretchable. I have some examples in the next slide, right? And one of the biggest advantages I see, because I'm also a big proponent of sustainability, it's an additive process. It's not like etching where you would use an acid wash to wipe away a lot of the uh, substrate and keep the conductive part which you need. So. Some of the examples and application areas, right? Starting off in the corner with smart uh, connectivity. Did you know that every handle device you have has 5G antennas on the border edge? And now with brands such as Oppo and many other Chinese players having foldable phones, this antenna stretches along the entire vertical length of the device. And some of these are only possible with uh, one of our technologies, which we have inks for, is called pad printing. Uh, the second one is called smart healthcare. 
Uh, along with one of our ecosystem partners out of Belgium, we created one of these health wearables, which can remotely monitor health. And we have a range of different adhesives and conductive materials that make this wearable patch last even for seven days with showering. You just have to remove the electronic unit. The third one is something that I will also do a deep dive on is for leak detection. Yeah? And the last one is basically having sensors in consumer electronics, whether it's various appliances in the home or in an industrial environment, for capacitive and touch sensing. So, as uh, going back again, right? Design freedom, easy to integrate, multifunctionality, and additive and high volume processing. And some of the examples of sensors, right, which now con connecting to the IoT world are capacitive sensor, pressure sensor. The, the third one is a pr uh, printed four liter. If you have used heating solutions in your car, traditionally there's copper wiring that gets a current and heats up to a certain level. We at Henkel have developed carbon-based positive temperature coefficientings that basically reach a certain temperature and maintain that plateau. This offers high uh, stability and safety. At the same time, uh, optimizes the power consumption by these heaters. So it's very valuable for the EV uh, environment as well. And the two sensors I would like to basically concentrate on are resistive sensors and the printed antenna. So the first one should be the 5G printed antenna. Uh, Going back to the example of the antennas used in mobile phones and handheld devices, these are used, uh, very suitable for IoT and 5G applications. Uh, LEO antenna elements, that's low Earth orbit satellites, right? Their dishes back here on Earth, like taking the example of Starlink or Amazon Cooper. Uh, these would also be requiring these high performance conductive materials that not only give very high conductivity and help to generate the needed radio frequency, but at the same time need to have very robust environmental stability. Because if you've seen these ads of uh, Starlink and how the dish is mounted on an RV, it's traveling all over the world in remote places and has to survive and still maintain the signal. And one of the important advantages of this technology called pad printing, which is basically putting a pad on our ink and printing it on a substrate and then repeating the process till you have the print you need, is it can be applied on 3D shapes in a very fast and quick way, so it's very easy to scale up and industrialize. So as I said, 5G brings new challenges in terms of frequency requirements, in terms of uh, the performance it has to provide. The phones are shrinking. Uh, everyone is reducing weight, even if Apple is just reducing its new phone by one gram. There is less clearance and room to apply these coatings or to have these circuits in place. And hence, new technologies and new materials are the way forward. And that's where uh, we are really trying to push and develop our materials in that uh, area. And at the same time, having this 3D printability, right, is also equally important for these uh, phone manufacturers or for the circuit makers. So print direct structure basically puts the conductive silver on the surface of the handle device. And then by printing multiple layers, you have your stack of circuitry that is basically forming the connections inside the phone. So traditional approaches don't work because you have to print on 3D devices. And coming to the resistive sensor, this is in collaboration with the ecosystem partner, Leo. The CEO, Matt, is also, uh, I just saw him a few minutes back, so he's also there. Uh, I don't know if he's presenting. But Leo is based out of the UK. They use our inks and make these smart sensors. What you see on the, on the underside of this duct is basically a smart tape having high conductive carbon ink. We call it the 407. And a dielectric ink to coat on it, which basically protects this conductive layer and forms this stack that when water is falling on it, it creates this resistive circuit and gives the signal pointing out exactly which section of these horizontal segments is having the water leakage. So we could adapt this design and based on the requirements of how much sensitivity you want to have in your detection, the more lines, the more the detection area, and hence it gives you a better readout, depending again on the application, right? If you want to detect just flooding, maybe we might have a different design and a different location area where the smart tape could be applied. What you see at the bottom, right? Um, what you see at the bottom, right? If, you, if I can draw your attention to the black box, that's basically the electronic hardware, right? That's the IP that takes the sensor, uh, sensor's readout and then connects it to the cloud. And um, uh, the layer solutions are also LoRaWAN certified with uh, layer also being a member. So it uses LoRaWAN to basically connect with the local networks and then give uh, the customer the readout and uh, the data that they need to collect. 
so you may ask where is this use case required right uh, because uh, one of the biggest benefactors could be insurance companies that have to take care of buildings it could be building management uh, maintenance companies or even uh, manufacturing companies that might have requirements in their facility uh, for us at Henkel we put this in a new innovation center in Dusseldorf just to check if there is any leakage in any of our given labs, especially because we have a lot of different uh, testing going on, how um, quick is the readout? And it works really well in different environments and in different locations, right? Uh, you may ask, uh, is it always necessary to stick it on a duct? Yes and no. Uh, it depends if you want to move the uh, sensor around. But for reliability, we always have assumed that having it in one location is uh, incre Im improving the reliability of the sensor placement. So. The next one, I would just like to bring your um, attention to our ink experience kit, right? For anyone who is quite new to printed electronics, so a lot of you guys said that, yes, we know about it, but would you know which material to use? Would you know whom to contact to make a printed foil which you can connect with your hardware or even to a Raspberry Pi device? So to remove these barriers to enter the world of printed electronics, we at Henkel, under a Henkel QEsive Solutions, which is a digital brand, uh, we created a do-it-yourself box more for B2B partners. Uh, we took four sensor technologies, we printed it, we uh, uh, provided all the USB connectors, we even provided the central computing device, which is the Raspberry Pi, and the adapter. So you basically have to simply follow the instructions, connect all the different pieces, and then you have the kit ready to use with live data readout in the Raspberry Pi, which was probably the biggest pain last year to source uh, because of unavailability, if uh, any of you were also trying to get it. Um, and what you could do is you could re see the live data readout on the Raspberry Pi, also connected to your laptop or to your desktop in the lab if your IT systems allow it. Yeah? So uh, what are some of the sensors? The one below in green is the level sensor. That's basically a non-contact capacitive sensor that you stick on a, a plastic container and it can tell you between the two electrodes what is the water level that uh, the container is holding. And some of the other ones in silver are basically pressure sensors. So if you have ever touched uh, flat buttons at an elevator or any other device, it's basically using the same technology. We use different sensitivity of inks uh, to give different readouts because then depending on a hard or soft press, uh, you know what is the force that is required. So uh, if anyone is interested to learn a bit more about this kit or order it for your R&D teams or any of your uh, technical experts or you know the technology geeks that can play around with it, find new applications, we're happy to connect. The website is there, the QR code is there. I'm also available after the talk to give further insights. And uh, you can also watch the tutorials on the website, download the technical data sheets to see what are the materials we, all, we use in the prints. And that's, that's our idea of using printed electronics for the next gen of IoT sensors, uh, using and leveraging our materials to gain better connectivity and driving the digitalization push forward in our different markets and applications. So thank you, and happy to take any questions if they're from this audience. Thank you. Yes. As for the printing, um, do you need, uh, or are there needed any special technologies like mesh printing, or can we use some digital technologies for it, which are broadly available in print houses, or uh, do we cooperate uh, with you? Thank you. Right. So uh, the technologies I mentioned, such as screen printing or roll to roll, roll to roll is more commercial for high speed, but generally flat bed screen printing is the most industry wide use for small scale applications and for starting off it. There are hundreds of other technologies coming up, such as inkjet printing or digital printing as well. Depending on the application, depending on the substrate and the material you're using, we could advise our customers or anyone who's interested to use our materials and also connect. Uh, different printers, right? So we also have a network of printers who can help from prototyping to scaling up your solution to a, uh, to a more production uh, size uh, uh, print manufacturing quantity, you know? Going from, say, uh, 100 pieces, maybe to start off it and going to 10,000 pieces and then was adding more zeros to it. So these printers do have those capabilities to reach the scalability. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, yeah. Okay, then thank you. Thank you for your attention.